Hello, this is a video about nitrous oxide abuse. Uh, this is mainly aimed at health professionals like podiatrists, uh, but patients will also find this helpful. And this is a canister that was bought in by my last patient who didn't understand why he lost sensation in the bottom of his foot. Um, Birmingham is one of the leading cities in the UK regarding nitrous oxide abuse, but there are many other cities around the UK that are also suffering from this horrible plague. Uh, I have seen 12 patients this year who have presented in clinic with various symptoms which indicate to me that they need to have further tests uh, to see if they have got uh, subacute uh, spinal cord issues with due to nitrous oxide abuse. Now, for my podiatry colleagues, let me explain uh, or let me describe the kind of patients that will come in. So some of these patients may complain of numbness in their feet. Uh, I've had patients who've complained of numbness uh, on the hallux, the, the big toe or underneath the metatarsal regions. I've had a few patients who've had drop foot as well. So you, if, if they've got a drop foot and they can't lift their foot up, that can also be linked to uh, nitrous oxide abuse. Generally speaking, they don't want to tell you straight away, so you've got to fish it out of them. Um, these are young lads between the age of 16 and 25. Um, they have been doing nitrous oxide for a little while. Generally speaking, when they, when they use nitrous oxide, they don't just use it on its own. They also combine it with alcohol, other drugs like uh, marijuana or heroin, uh, and that can be one of the contributing factors. Now, when the patient comes in, ask them about numbness in their hands, okay? So they may be having numbness in their fingers, but they haven't related it to their, their feet. Uh, they may be unsteady on their feet as well, so that may be, uh, that may be something that you wanna ask about. Ask about um, if they have any urgency to uh, go to the bathroom. Uh, uh, a bowel urgency may be one of the, also one of the things that they may be experiencing. Uh, Romberg's test will be positive, so they'll, they'll find it difficult to stand on one foot. Um, they will lose protective sensation and vibration, or it'll be reduced. Uh, the actual reflexes, so if you test L, L4, L5, S1, um, my podiatry colleagues that are listening to this will know what I'm talking about. Uh, they will have diminished responses to uh, the, these kind of uh, neurological testing, okay? One of, the, one of the red flags that you have to be aware of is um, uh, DVT. So uh, this is something that you may want to ask them about if they've got any swelling in their, in their calf region, etc., etc. So the first course of action is patient education. Let them know what they've done, tell them to stop in no uncertain terms. So if they've got this numbness in their feet, if they've, sometimes it's like they're walking on pieces of glass. I've had one patient a couple of months ago and he literally explained it like every step is like walking on glass. And he, he's been abusing it for a good 12 months. Um, so the first thing is patient education. Let them know what they've done. Let them know they have to stop, okay? Then you need to send them to the GP. Now, the, the two blood tests that are done for this is serum B12 and uh, methyl malmonic acid, which is MMA. Um, these are the two tests that can be done, so uh, request these two tests. There is another one, it's called home, uh, homocysteine, I think it is, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, but that's difficult because it's gotta be transported in ice uh, once the blood is taken. But, but serum B12 and MMA, methyl malmonic acid, are the two tests that should be done straight away. I would also, I normally also request for folate, vitamin D uh, as well, because they may also have reduced folate and vitamin D, which can be contributing factors to their, their, um, their actual like neurological pain that they're experiencing. So that's something that you might want to consider. Those of you, uh, those podiatrists or health professionals that are independent prescribers can do this themselves. But I personally don't like it. I'd like to do it myself. I like to send them off to the GP because I understand there's going to be a consistent amount of treatment. Now, 
MRI scans might also be requested of the spine uh, also so that may be something that's done by the GP or a consultant um, the usual course of treatment is uh, vitamin B12 injections which is hydrocoxacobalin if I can pronounce it properly it's 1000 milligrams or 1 milligram intramuscular injections that are done every other day so Monday Wednesday and Friday for a few weeks until they uh, until their symptoms resolve uh, so it's usually about three weeks but the consultant will do this for the patient in some patients the symptoms don't resolve so I have seen patients where they've got permanent damage now um, they can't walk properly so these are young lads and they've just they're really struggling to walk some of some are where uh, some are using a walking stick to walk um, so you want to tell the patient this that this is not always reversible sometimes it is sometimes it's not um, you want to refer them to a local uh, drug service so that you can do have a holistic approach to it main thing main takeaway is number one if the patient walks into clinic and they've got numbness and they are uh, 16 to 25 there's no underlying conditions like they are not diabetic they're not any other systemic conditions right that could be leading to peripheral neuropathy you want to see or explore if they are using these nitrous oxide canisters although the law has recently been changed regarding this um, and it's changed the category of drug this comes under it's still going to be on the streets i'm telling you now people that want to get hold of it will get hold of it it's this is going to be one of those things that you're not going to stop now you can make it more difficult to purchase but it's going to be there so what i really want for my from my fellow professionals is have this in your mind think okay if a patient comes with drop foot uh peripheral neuropathy and there's no real cause then you need to have an honest conversation with the patient refer them to a gp uh, refer them for blood tests tell them about your provincial diagnosis um, give them a management plan say this is what this is what the papers and there have been a, a few papers written on this have stated that uh, this is the best course of treatment obviously you need to bear in mind differential diagnosis I hope this helped and uh, as you will all be aware nitrous oxide is not a laughing matter especially when it can ruin your life so those patients that are watching don't do it, it's not worth it.